Hey guys, Coach Nino Villa here, um, Disciple of Christ, husband, father. I like to jump on Periscope and share uh, my faith, my family, and my finances with you guys. And so today I just wanted to get together and talk about what you need to do, the first thing you need to do to reclaim your income and take back control of your, uh, your income. So that's what I want to talk about with you guys today. I'm going to give it just a few seconds, see who else jumps in. Excuse me one moment as I close the door. I should have done that before. <clears throat> All right, sorry about that, guys. So thanks for the hearts, Tabitha and Yama. If you guys aren't following me already, make sure that you uh, click the little icon, follow me. I'll make sure to follow you back after stream. And so, yeah, tonight I want to talk to you guys about what's the very first thing you need to do if you want to reclaim your income. <clears throat> and like I said, I'm just uh, I'm a, a guy who likes to get on and share about faith, family, and finances. I like to coach people uh, to financial freedom. I will tell you that currently I'm just an average Joe. I work a nine to five. I have a salary and benefits, and I just like to do this on the side to help people. So let me know, first and foremost... Are you guys familiar with a guy by the name of Dave Ramsey? If you know who Dave Ramsey is, hit me up with some hearts on the uh, on the stream. Dave Ramsey. All right. You guys don't know who Dave Ramsey is. That's all right. Go check him out later. And so the first thing you need to do in order to reclaim your income is you need to get on a budget. If you are not on a budget, then you don't know, or more specifically, you don't tell your money where to go. You wonder where it went. <clears throat> without a budget, without a plan for your money, you are going to continue to live paycheck to paycheck. And you're going to spend in areas you don't even know you're spending on because you're just simply not writing it down. And so Dave Ramsey teaches to have a brand new budget um, on paper, on purpose, every single month. And so one of the things I do as a coach is I like to come alongside people and help them devise that plan and execute that plan. And so you might be wondering, what should go in a budget, right? What should I be budgeting about? And so um, thanks, Tabitha and, and Jake, for hanging out. Um, go ahead and start to uh, you know, comment a question. What do you guys think should be in a budget? Obviously, your budget's going to be your income minus your expenses, but... What kind of expenses should be included in a budget? What do you guys think? And let me know where you're uh, tuning in from tonight. I'm here in sunny Arizona, where it was 110 degrees outside today. But what do you guys think? What needs to be in your budget? When you're writing down your income and your expenses, what expenses do you need to be including? I'll tell you it's a little bit of a trick question, but yeah, let me know what you think. Made in Paris. Thanks for uh, coming in, Made in Paris. Make sure you follow me, and I'll make sure to uh, follow you back. But the, uh, the topic at hand is budgeting. The first thing you need to do to reclaim your income is you need to budget. You need to put uh, on paper your income minus your expenses and uh, just the question to the group right now is, what should be in your budget? Yeah, heart it up. If, if, if you get it, if you know, hey, budget, yeah, I got to do that, whether you do it or not, if you know, like, yeah, I should be doing that, heart that up. Hey, Levi, thanks for uh, joining us. So, yeah, the question to you guys is, what should be in your budget? Well, it's kind of a trick question because the answer is everything you can possibly think of should be accounted for in your budget. And so at first, that might be a little intimidating, or at first you might not know exactly what every expense is, but that's okay. It takes time. Like anything, like riding a bike, driving a car, any of that stuff, it takes time. It takes a little bit of practice. And so if you're not accounting for everything right now, that's okay, but the goal is to work up to accounting for every expense that you have within your budget. So... Um, if you don't know where to get started, I, um, I'm prepared to share with you some categories that I use. Those categories really help me to stay on track and, and on point and, and really think about what I need to be um, accounting for. 
So um, I'm going to ask real quick again, just because a couple other people have uh, jumped in. Hey, Chris, uh, welcome. Thanks for hanging out. Who here is familiar with Dave Ramsey? If you're familiar with Dave Ramsey, heart it up. Heart it up. Dave Ramsey, the total money makeover, a New York Times best-selling uh, book. He's a syndicated radio uh, talk show host. And so um, I found Dave Ramsey about uh, two and a half years ago, maybe not even that long, but uh, ever since being on his plan, I've really cracked down on mine and my wife's budget, and we've been able to pay off $40,000 of debt in just two years, really reclaiming our income. All those debt payments equaled about $1,500 or $2,000 a month going out in debt, and now I, I get to hold on to that $1,500, that $2,000, and make better decisions with it. I'll use that money to buy assets versus liabilities. So I'm about to flip my screen here for you guys, and I'm going to share with you um, my actual budget. It, it's like my real numbers and everything. Uh, we'll take a look at what it looked like uh, for the month of June. And uh, we're going to really kind of focus in on some of these um, categories. And so if you're wondering, like, what should I put in my budget? Um, obviously, the first thing you want to account for is your income. And then uh, what you want to do is you want to get really specific as to when is that income coming in and how much is it. But you want to account for your income. And then you want to start to list out some categories. And I like to list uh, in a particular order. Uh, by priority, and so the first thing I like to do is I like to give. Um, I made in my father's image, and he was quite the giver. So, um, and I, of course, I mean my heavenly father. Uh, so I like to to give. The next thing you should be doing after giving is you need to to um, pay yourself, right? You need to be saving and investing, and so. That's the next thing I do. And then we get into like the more um, regular type of expenses, uh, you know, the typical type of expenses that uh, people would normally have on their list. And so for us, you know, that's groceries and uh, toiletries. We have a little one. So we have um, money allocated to just, you know, special baby stuff. And so our first kind of group of expenses is food related, right? Making sure that we have energy and full tummies. Then we look at housing. So we've got to take care of the mortgage payment and the homeowners association. Make sure that we have a roof over our head. Next, it's utilities. So everything else related to the house, like electric, water, and uh, trash removal. Making sure that those things happen. We keep the lights on. We keep the water running. After that, it's transportation. And so we don't have a car payment anymore. We've paid off. Uh, we sold my wife's car, and then we paid off my car afterwards. Um, so no more car payment in this category, but this is where you would account for auto insurance and for your expenses regarding um, you know, stopping off at the gas station and filling up. And so making sure that you allocate for that. Um, here in the Villa household, we think life insurance is more important than things like the internet uh, because heaven forbid something ever happened to either my wife or I. Um, the other one is then taken care of, and if something happened to the two of us, the kids are taken care of. And then we get into this category called bills and subscriptions. And this is what I like to, uh, to, I like to, um, I always talk about this being like a, um, a luxury category. So things like the internet and our cell phones, as much as they are nice to have and, and we like having them and we're not looking to give them up anytime soon, they're not necessities, and so we don't. It's not absolutely required that we have a cell phone. Although I wouldn't be able to get on scope anymore, and that would be sad. That would be sad for me. That would be sad for you guys, and in, in, in the ability for us to build a relationship. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's a luxury, and so um, that category, bills and subscriptions, and I'll flip back for you guys. But that category of bills and subscriptions, this used to be a lot bigger. When we first got started, we were spending money on all sorts of ridiculousness. Um, you know, we had gym memberships, and we had credit credit monitoring accounts, and we had um, other um, subscriptions like uh, Netflix, and just a bunch of stuff. This this um, particular category of just bills and subscriptions, things that I deem luxuries, not necessities. Um, this used to total over. Uh, five hundred dollars. Well, now these things total 
uh, what is that? One hundred and seventy-seven dollars. So we got it. We trimmed it down a lot. We we pulled back um, a lot in this category and really just tightened up the budget there. And so um, that that's the next category. After that, then it's like entertainment and recreation. So this is where my wife and I get to put a little bit of money in our pockets and uh, have it to spend. Because what you may have noticed is so far you haven't seen anything for like going out to the movies or going to a restaurant or anything like that. That ends up in this category. It's uh, a far less priority, so it's way down the list. And we don't do a whole heck of a lot. You know, between my wife and I, it's $160 a month. Which, you know, if we want to go through the drive through and pick up a coffee or, um, you know, a fast food meal or something like that, it all comes from this money right here. So that's our money to kind of do whatever we want with. And then we get into the debts. And boy, are, are there still a lot left. We may have been able to pay off $40,000 to date, which is awesome. And we don't have a car payment anymore. And we don't owe things like credit card debt. Everything we have left are student loans. Her student loans and my student loans. Mine are currently in forbearance. And then uh, Andrew wishes he had pocket money. I feel you, Andrew. That's you know, once you get on a, a budget, though, you can uh, you can kind of allow yourself a little bit of flexibility because here's the thing, man. You work really hard for the money that you make, and you should be able to spend a little bit of it. <clears throat> you know, being able to allocate just a, a tiny bit. So that you can kind of do what you want, have the freedom to you know drive through a drive through every once in a while or whatnot. So our debts, like I was saying, include just uh, student loans at this point, but there's a lot of them. So uh, my wife's student loans total like thirty thirty four thousand dollars at this point, uh, but it's broken up in in loan categories. And so here's how we've been able to pay off debt. We work a thing called the debt snowball, which means once we pay off a debt and we no longer have that minimum monthly payment, we roll that minimum monthly payment into the next into the next um, debt. And so we've gotten to a point where here's my new minimum monthly uh, payment on the student loans. You probably can't see that, but it says like $606, okay? Well, they only require a minimum payment of $35. So by paying $600, I'm going to pay off this balance of $2,600 a lot quicker than the nine years that are left on this loan. I'll have it paid off in like four months, right? So that's what happens is once one is paid, you roll it over to the next one, that gets paid, you roll it over to the next one, and so on and so forth. And that's how you start to just tear through the debt. Here's the thing. You were spending that money on other debt payments anyway, right? When we, when we had a car payment of $400, we were spending that $400 anyway, might as well roll it into the next debt and just start tearing through debt like it's like our lives depended on it. And then last but not least, I have a category for anything that might be kind of month specific. So like we have a water softening system and it needed its annual maintenance this month. And so for this month, I budgeted, you know, the $170 needed to take care of that. So that's kind of a breakdown of the categories. Look how simple I keep it, right? Income, giving, saving. So, you know, giving, uh, specifically I give to the church right now, and then saving, paying my wife and I, and then we go into the expenses. And the expenses, we, we run a pretty lean budget. I don't know how many people are running this lean a budget, but, you know, our expenses, food, housing, utilities, transportation, those are like the first four things you need to take care of. Then, you know, I think life insurance is really important to take care of the family. And then it's all those little luxuries. And again, look at look at how lean this is. We don't have a ton of luxuries, um, but it's a good thing. It's, it's really helped us to reclaim that income and uh, pay off that debt. And then that pocket money. We also have the kids on commission. I have a five-year-old. And a 15-month-old. The 15-month-old doesn't get commissions right now, but the the five-year-old does. So she has a chore list, and if she does her chores, she gets paid. If she doesn't do her chores, she doesn't get paid. Oh, look at that! She's learning that money comes from work, and Daddy's not an ATM. Um, debts, like I said, listing debts. You want to list your debts smallest to largest, so uh, by balance owed. 
and that way you can tear through the smallest one as quickly as possible, roll those minimum monthly payments, and just start tearing through this debt. You know, I would be holding on to this debt for the next nine years um, if I wasn't on the debt snowball. This stuff will be paid off in two. Um, I get seven years of income back that way to make better uh, financial decisions with, and then anything that's month specific. So, you know, um, what you don't see on here. Uh, even though it's the month of June, is like Father's Day. Well, we included that in the month of May, but, you know, Father's Day being in June, you probably would want to throw a line item here and allocate just a couple of dollars to that to make sure you get Dad something nice. So thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Um, that's really about it. Looks like we lost everybody out of the room, but that's okay. I wanted to keep this short and sweet anyway. So there you have it. The very first thing you need to do to reclaim your income is you need to get on a budget. I can help you do that. I'm Coach Nino Villa. You can find me here on Periscope. You can find me on Meerkat. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram, all at the handles at Coach Nino Villa. Um, yeah, check out like my YouTube channel. I do my monthly budget there as well. And I, uh, I walk you guys through it. But that's the first thing you need to do. You need to write down every expense on paper, on purpose, every single month so you know exactly where your money is going and you're not wondering where it went. Guys, keep living God's way for God's glory, and I'll check you out next time. Love you.